Mega Man is a franchise I've been very fond of for many years now. Starting with the Mega Man Battle Network games, as you may know from my Mega Man Battle Network tier list, but then moving on to the Mega Man Classic games, which I've already talked about. But the following franchise, Mega Man X, which debuted initially on the Super Nintendo, didn't hook me as much as Classic Mega Man or Battle Network did, for some reason. But I did play a good deal of the original Mega Man X on various virtual console releases, and I just never could bring myself to like fully beat it. For one, the final boss is really challenging, but for two, again, there's something about it that just didn't click with me or something. Now, after returning to some of the Mega Man X games via the Mega Man X Legacy Collection, I've developed a newfound appreciation for the X series, or at least a few of the games. So I haven't played all of them. I own the second Legacy Collection, but because the general reception to Mega Man X 5 through 8 is like very mixed, to negative. I don't really want to bother with those until I clear out a lot of the other games that I actually want to play. There is the possibility for me visiting those. I just, I don't really like playing bad games if they are notoriously bad, so I don't know. We'll see. But I went ahead very recently and actually finished the original Mega Man X for the first time, uh, and then I played Mega Man X 2 from front to back for the very first time. I've played like maybe about half of Mega Man X3 and then I've gotten to the final boss of Mega Man X4. But I think I'm at the point where I'm ready to talk about these games, even if I haven't finished the latter two, because there are reasons for that. The original Mega Man X is a classic among classics. It's like a must-play game if you're working through the Super Nintendo catalog. It is so iconic in the single-player video game space and is an excellent action platformer in its own right. I think the main negative behind Mega Man X, if you can even call it a negative, is that you don't start with the dash ability. So starting with Chill Penguin stage is highly, highly recommended. I think technically you can get the dash, kill yourself until you get a game over, and then you will keep the dash. Which reminds me, something that I really liked about the Legacy Collection is that you're able to save your most current password in order to somewhat have a save function. But two things bother me, just from a quality of life standpoint in Mega Man X, and well really, the first three games in general, even in this collection, is that there isn't a proper save system. The password thing like does alleviate that, I will admit. So that's not really a big problem, but the weird thing is that your button layout is not saved still. I get that it was a hardware limitation or like some weird excuse out there, I'm sure, that this wasn't even the case on the Super Nintendo, but I highly recommend for those who haven't played Mega Man X and intend to after watching this video that you bind the dash to the left bumper. That's how it functions in the Mega Man Zero games, and I think that that just feels a hell of a lot better than having it be on a face button. But because it doesn't save your configuration, what I had to do was on Steam, I made a controller layout using Steam's amazing controller remapping function. I love that feature so much, especially now that most of the kinks are ironed out. Um, but what I did for that was I basically rebound or double bound the B button to both B and L. I would have unmapped it from B, but because B is used to like cancel options in the menus, I wanted to just leave it that way for convenience sake. Usually you're able to cycle through your weapons on the bumpers, but it wasn't that bad just having the right bumper to do that. Like you could always use one of the triggers or something as well if you wanted to. But back to Mega Man X1. So not starting with the dash is kind of a bummer, but once you get beyond that, I really like the creativity behind the boss weapons and the way they're able to be utilized. And then of course the armor upgrades add another layer of depth to the Mega Man X games compared to classic. Like, I love classic Mega Man for its simplicity, but X has more of a modern sensibility in that there is more of an action focus, since you are able to dash continuously, and, like, it just speeds up the gameplay in general, which I really dig. Uh, the final boss was a pain in the ass, particularly because if you close the game and come back to it, you have to play through all the Sigma stages again, which is kind of annoying, but what's nice is when you're still in that same instance, if you game over at the very last Sigma stage, which is the final boss, or the final boss is, then you can go farm for health, fill up your sub tank, and then go back into the Sigma stage, because I don't actually recommend filling up your sub tanks in the Sigma stage, it's too tedious. That's another thing that kind of bothers me, is it's very tedious to fill up your sub tanks in the Mega Man X games. I don't particularly care for that. Even if it would quote-unquote ease the difficulty, I wish that when you boot into the game you just started with full sub tanks, or at least the ones you've collected, obviously. Again, it's that kind of thing where, like, is grinding a difficulty thing, or is it just tedium? Because I think that the two get conflated a lot, especially in JRPGs. Although, difficulty in JRPGs tends to be, like, not grinding and then taking on a boss that you're underleveled for and using strategy to overcome that statistical difference, which sometimes is possible and sometimes isn't. 
Yeah, it's just one of those tedious things that I'm just like, why? There, there's not really a reason for this besides it's how it used to be, but that's not a good excuse at all. I saw one forum post somewhere about the remapping thing or the password thing or like one of these quality of life things and they were like, oh, well, that's just how it was on the Super Nintendo. I don't give a shit. It's bad design. Moving on, the rest of the game is wonderfully designed. The levels are dynamic. There's splitting paths. There's ways to use your weapons to alter the environments. There's also environment alterations that are made depending on which order you beat the bosses in. Like if you beat Storm Eagle stage, then Spark Mandrel stage has some missing platforms and broken lights and stuff like that. And then if you beat Chill Penguin stage before Flame Mammoth, then all the lava's frozen over. Like it's really great shit, but it allows you to kind of optimize a path through the game, getting all the sub tanks and getting all the armor upgrades and getting all the, uh, the heart pieces basically but yeah i really like that you can get these upgrades and then game over but then still keep it so that way you at least progressed in some way even if you didn't beat the boss because then if you're really struggling you can go try to find more health upgrades or armor pieces and stuff like that to help in your quest to, to take down all the mavericks which brings me to the story context in Mega Man X, which I really like, where it's a good century or so, I believe, past when Classic took place, where Classic was more or less a villain of the week kind of thing, except the villain was always Wily, so not super interesting from a story front, but it set the stage, it set the world, you know, in some ways. Not very extensively, but it's the origin story of Dr. Wily and Dr. Light splitting paths. And so then you have X, which is a truly sentient robot, whereas the original Mega Man was designed to follow orders from Dr. Light, X actually is a free thinker. I think all Reploids are free thinkers in that way, as far as I know. And so then you have these Reploids that go Maverick, which are basically, they turn evil because of a virus. This is all later explained in Mega Man X4, but I think it's interesting context regardless, where, all right, light spoilers for the Mega Man X franchise, if you really care. I don't think knowing this ahead of time is actually detrimental to the experience. It really, like, just enhanced my appreciation for this series, where Zero, who shows up to save X at the beginning of the first stage, and is kind of this robot that X aspires to be at the beginning of the franchise was originally designed by Dr. Wily to destroy Dr. Light's creations. And so Zero technically started out as a bad guy off screen, and then he fought Sigma, who is the main villain of the X franchise, but Sigma was originally a Maverick hunter, so a Reploid whose job it was to hunt down these robots that went Maverick. But in his fight with Zero, Zero's programming got recombobulated or something, so that he, he like lost his memory or something, or his prime directive, I don't exactly know. But then Sigma contracted the Maverick virus somehow. Again, I don't know the exact details, but it sets the stage where Sigma was formerly a good guy. And so that's why there is this contention between him and X, besides just being like the big bad. Because in the original Mega Man X, there is a little bit of backstory, but not enough for you to really like give a shit who Sigma is at first until he starts showing up again and again and again throughout the series. But it's really not as convoluted as it sounds, especially if you play X4 eventually. It does explain this. I do recommend if you're playing on PC to use the undub mod for X4 because the English voice acting is infamously terrible. There is a charm to it for sure. It's very indicative of the time period's level of voice acting. But before we get to talking about X4, Mega Man X2 is what I would probably deem as like a perfect sequel in a lot of ways. Mega Man X2 quickly became my favorite Mega Man X game, and it's not particularly close. One big thing is that you do start with a dash, so that does help a lot. And then when you get the leg upgrades, you get an air dash, which is like this next level of platforming versatility. I like the stages even better. I liked a lot of the boss fights even better. Some of them were kind of annoying, like Wheel Gator having to wait for him to come out of the, the blood, I guess. I'm assuming that's what that is, or oil or something. Waiting for him to come out of that was kind of annoying, but most of the bosses were fun to fight. Overdrive Ostrich was a particularly fun one, in my opinion. Instead of being Sigma stages, it's the X Hunters because you have these somewhat random encounter bosses. Like you can see them on the map, but they'll jump around to different stages and you have to defeat all of them before you unlock the X Hunter stages if you want to like get the best ending, so to speak. Otherwise, you have to fight Zero, I think, which I've heard is a tough fight. But because I got all the Zero parts, I didn't have to worry about that. Which the reason behind that is because Zero fucking blows himself up at the end of the first X. So he's technically dead, but then they rebuild him. But yeah, X2, I think, was fantastic. And again, easily my favorite of these four. There's just not a whole lot more to say about it because it is just kind of a better version of the original. Now, moving on to X3. X3, I played the first couple of bosses, and I think I figured out what exactly wasn't clicking with me. So I feel like the level design wasn't as dynamic in that the previous two games had a lot of branching paths and different ways to tackle them. And then X3 just felt like it didn't have that. Plus, you have the enhancement ships where you can 
get these in the stages, but if you decide not to get any of them and you wait to one of the final stages, you get the gold armor, which gives you access to all of them at once. It's like de-incentivizing you to actually go and get all the upgrades, which I think is, again, counterintuitive and not a good idea. This is kind of neither here nor there, but I think it's weird that you can't see the boss names in X3 until you actually select a stage. Like there's no details or anything like there were in the previous two. Just a weird omission. I don't know why that is exactly. Maybe it was a rush development cycle or something. Who knows? But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say on X3. I don't really have a desire to go back and finish it, to be honest. X4, on the other hand, I stopped playing for different reasons, but I beat all of the stages up to the final boss. I really liked a lot of the stages. Something I really like about the PS1 final... Final Fantasy. Something I really like about the PS1 Mega Man games that I've played, at least, being Mega Man 8 and X4, is that your weapon energy is refilled when you die. So you don't have to worry about conserving for the boss fight or anything like that. It more heavily incentivizes using the boss weapons actually in the stage instead of like I typically play in classic, just using them on the bosses because it was just super tedious to use them in classic a lot of the time because you had the menu and all that. Just broke up the pace of the gameplay. A lot of the bosses did fall into the Spark Mandrel trap. Like, actually managing to land some of these attacks required a little bit of finesse and memorization of their patterns, regardless of the partial stun locking. And I really like the boss weapons in general, like Cyber Peacock's weapon, being able to, like, aim it up and down, and then, like, it locks on. Like, that's, that's a super cool idea for a boss weapon. It's just super unique ideas in both the weapons and the level design and the boss fights and designs as well. Uh, Mega Man X4 also has a more overt storytelling approach. And I don't feel like it hinders it compared to something like Metroid Fusion, which go watch my Metroid Fusion Illusion of Fear video where I talk about that. This is where we get that backstory that I mentioned at the beginning of the video with Sigma and Zero's origins, so to speak, and just kind of the connection between these characters in general. But yeah, as I mentioned, I don't have a big desire to go and play X5 through 8. 5, 6, and 7, it seems like they get progressively worse. X8, it seems like some people like, but I would feel weird specifically playing X8 and skipping 5 through 7. I guess I could, but like, I, I don't know. I own the second Legacy Collection, so it's an option at some point. And if I do do that, then I'm sure I'll, I'll make a video about it. But I also feel like some of those games have been talked to death already, like X7 in particular has just been shat all over. It seems like one of those games that actually is as bad as people say, but I don't know, just making another video shitting on it just doesn't seem like productive to the conversation in general. Just go watch another video on it, I guess. Let me know in the comments your impressions on the Mega Man X games that I've talked about, or whether or not you think that it is worth playing 5, 6, 7, or 8, or just 8, or whatever. Don't forget to like and subscribe as always if you enjoyed and I hope to catch you guys in the next video.